you have a piece of paper and a pen, I want you to use it today. If you've got an iPhone, I don't want you to Google your shopping list. I want you, I want you to make some notes because what I'm going to say today are laws in the kingdom, laws that never change, laws that will work for anybody who will use these laws. These laws are so important because if without them, you will not fulfill God's plan for your life. And I want to share with you today how powerful a seed is. A seed is how God rules and works in anyone's life. The definition of a seed is the beginning, the beginning of a thing, something you've been given that can create anything you've been promised. God doesn't just make you a promise, but he gives you the seed of that thing. And when he gives you the seed, it can produce everything that he's promised. The seed can be something you know. The seed can be something you've experienced. The seed can be something that, that you have, that you've minimized and you don't think it's a big deal. The stone that David put in the slingshot was a seed that God had given him. God had allowed the river to shape that smooth stone so it would go right. But sometimes we think, if I had this or that, if God makes you a promise, he's already given you the seed. And I'm going to give you some seeds, and, and this is so simple, but if you will let it speak to you, God's going to do it today and give you steps and seeds to, to increase the influence and ability that he has put on your life. Number one, access is the seed for opportunity. That's why when you are given access to someone's life or any environment that you have access to, inside of that access is the seed for opportunity, the opportunity to reveal your difference, the opportunity to reveal your talents, your gifts, the opportunity to reveal your passion, your significance. When God allows you access to anyone, and some of you don't even realize the people you have access to, the places you have access to, identify the environment that you've been given access to and enter it and realize it's the seed that has been planted in your life to give you new opportunities. So very important to recognize that. Number two, and I love this one, the seed, the battle is, battle is the seed for, for territory. Battle is the seed for territory, meaning you cannot take more territory you cannot enlarge your life more without battles. The battle is the seed for territory. Get good at fighting, in other words. If you want more, if you expect more, if you're believing for more, if you feel like God has promised you more, it will not come without fighting. You don't ever get to retire from warfare. You will have to fight for everything that God has promised you. And those children are territory. That marriage is territory. That business is territory. And if you want more territory, then what you're asking for is uh, you're saying, I'm willing to fight for anything that you want me to have, God. You'll never outgrow warfare. The battle is over territory. Jabez in 1 Chronicles 4 prayed, enlarge my territory. But with the enlargement, every time we've enlarged this ministry, every time we've enlarged this ministry, it came with a new battle. Battles sometimes that I didn't see coming. Battles sometimes that I, I never imagined that we would fight in that. But you cannot take new territory without new battles. And the battle is the seed for new territory. Fight for that territory. Those kids are yours. Fight for it. The enemy will contest it. 
Goliaths don't show up till you enter the territory God has promised you. They didn't fight one giant out in the wilderness when they were wandering around. But the moment they step foot into the promised land, giants start showing up. Warfare starts taking place. The presence of a giant is proof you have entered into your promised land. Not an easy land flowing with milk and honey. It might be flowing with milk and honey, but you better get your sword out because I promise you a battle is going to come. That's where the giants appear on the turf that God told you you can have. Giants only show up in the promised land. Battle is the seed for territory. When you understand that, you don't whine. You don't complain. You just get up and you say, never will I take new territory without a fight. Never fight for what God didn't give you. If God didn't give it to you, you you need to just go on and say, it's not worth fighting for. I don't want anything God didn't give it to me. But I'm going to be like that man Shama in the Old Testament in 2 Samuel 23. If God did give it to me and it's my pea patch and it may not be much to you, but he was fighting a whole battalion of the Philistines over a bean patch and he defeated them. And you know why? Because he said, God gave it to me. Battle is the seed for territory. Fight for your turf. Fight for what is yours. Number three, thankfulness is the seed for joy. Everybody say that with me. Thankfulness is the seed for joy. When you walk in a room, it's possible that you walk in and you only notice what's wrong. We are a negative people. We are a people who have been infected with stinking thinking. And we are, if we're not careful, we just see the glass half empty all the time. But I'm preaching to you this morning. If you don't have any joy, if you're depressed and discouraged and Excuse me, that's getting on my nerves, and now it's gone. (laughs) Thankfulness, because I'll slip on it if I don't watch it. Thankfulness is the seed for joy. Boy, that, that got down in my soul. That if I don't have joy, it's not God's fault because I'm alive and the sun is shining. Thankful. Find something to be thankful for because thankfulness is the seed for joy. Your circumstances do not control your joy. Your gratitude, the attitude of gratitude and thankfulness is the seed for joy. Have you thanked God for anything this morning? Have you thanked God? If we, if you had a headache, you would have told 14 people before you got here. I got a headache. I don't even feel like going. I don't know why I'm going in here. Those drums are getting on my nerves. That bass is just making my head thump. Now you didn't have a headache. Have you been thankful? Have you told anybody? I'm so thankful I don't have a headache today. No, because we're programmed to only notice the negative. Oh, but I came to preach to somebody today. That thankfulness is the seed for joy. Hallelujah. Lord, my name is written in the book of life and heaven is going to be my home. Get thankful and your joy level will start rising. If you're like me, you struggle sometimes because we... I, I notice things that aren't right more than I notice things that are right. But thankfulness has to be worked on. Thankfulness has to be something you teach yourself to focus on. David said when he was facing Goliath, he didn't say that's a big old giant. He said the same God that defeated the lion and the bear will defeat this giant. When you're, when you're talking about thankfulness being the seed for joy, I'm, I'm simply teaching you today that you have to use self-talk. You have to say things like, God has been good to me. God has sustained me. 
God has always provided for me. And you know what I'm doing? I'm sowing the seed of thankfulness and it makes my soul start getting happy and joy starts coming back to my life. You've got so much to be thankful for. And the thankfulness is the seed for joy. It must be verbally expressed. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. God has been good. Can we all just take a seed of thankfulness and sow it right now? Look up to heaven and say, you've been mighty good to me. I mean, here I am right now in God's house and I don't have to have a perfect life, but I got a good life and to God be the glory. See, you feel that? You feel that? Thankfulness is the seed for joy. And the lack of thankfulness is the seed for depression, discouragement, and whining. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Man, I can't hardly get past that one. Well, nothing's changing. Thankfulness is the seed for joy. If stuff don't change around me, I can change inside of me if I'll start being thankful. Number four, confrontation is the seed for change. Anything unconfronted increases in your life. Anything. You have to confront what you don't like. If you don't like your body, confront it with a gym. You have to confront. Confrontation is the seed for change. If you don't like your hair, change it. You can part it on the other side. You can flip it around. You can do whatever you want to do or just shave it off, but change it. Confrontation is the seed for change. Anyone you like will occasionally, and anyone who likes you will occasionally confront you. What you got to worry about is if they stop confronting you, that means they don't see you in their future anymore. There's an amazing Bible verse in the Old Testament that God spoke and said, leave Ephraim alone. He tried and he tried and he tried and God reached a point where he said, just leave him alone. You don't want God to leave you alone. You may act like you want to. You may be here today and you, you may be, you know, living a crazy life and you just wish God would just leave you alone. You don't want God to leave. Confrontation means I care about you. Confrontation, I, I care enough to confront you. Confrontation is, is the seed for change. When those ladies that stood on this platform recognized they had something in their life that was killing them, killing every good relationship that they had in their life, killing and destroying any hopes of happiness, joy, peace, and and a life worth living. They had to confront it. They had to confront it. Some of them had to go to jail, they said, but they still had to reach a point where they said, if I don't do something, nothing will never change. And confrontation is the seed for change. If you've got a lousy marriage and it's been lousy a long time, confront it. Get some help. Do something. Reach out to somebody. Have somebody at least praying for you. Confrontation is the seed for change. Confront it. Quit coming to church, playing the game, and confront the issues that are destroying your life. Because God has grace. God has power. God has mighty Holy Spirit anointing that can break every yoke and set you free. But you got to confront it. You got to quit playing church. Number five, this is a big one. Listening is the seed for knowledge. Listening, be in the moment, listen. I told them in the first service, my daughter, Connor, my, my uh, youngest daughter, she just loves to come home and if she gets me, she talks to me, she tells me everything going on in her life. She'll tell me, she'll talk to me about 
um, uh, the latest thing in, in Hollywood, this, that, and the other, that, this, that, and her friends, and this and that, and it's just wonderful. I love it. And sometimes, though, my mind, after a while, will start straight, and she'll say, Daddy, are you listening to me? And my eyes go right back. But listening is the seed for knowledge. Listen for pain. Listen for anger. Listen for frustration. Listening is the seed for knowledge. Did you hear me, men? If your wife says something in frustration, that's the seed for knowledge for you to... <laughs> We're dense. We're dense. She ought to do something about that. She's telling you for a reason why she's so frustrated. Cherise sent me a text this week, and she said, I love you, and et cetera. And she said, uh, but um, I have had all of your closet that I can take, and if it's not fixed by tonight, I'm moving into another bedroom. Well, instantly, <laughs> instantly, I don't know what I was doing, but I left what I was doing. It took me four hours to get that thing like it needed to be. But I promise you, come on, I'm preaching. Listening is the seed for knowledge. Turn to somebody and say, say it again. <laughs> Stay till you hear. Put excellence in the moment. Abandon yourself to the moment and listen to one another. Listening is the seed, is the seed. Boy, what a great seed. Listen to your children. Listen to them. Number six, honor is the seed for access. Your future will be decided by who you choose to honor. If you do not honor people, if you do not honor authority, if you do not honor elders, you will not have a good future. Honor is the willingness to reward a person. Honor people through the right words, through kindness, through respect. Sometimes you honor people through silence because if they're an elder or somebody, you are not going to change their mind. So the greatest thing you can learn to do is disagree if you disagree but you're the younger, they're the older, shut up about it and let them have their deal and you don't have to say anything about it. I'm preaching better than y'all letting on right now. <laughs> Silence is a way of honoring people sometimes. Spirit of honor, God, let us always have it. I like this next one. Presentation is the seed for acceptance. Presentation. Now you say this ain't in the Bible. Yes, it is. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And all I care about is God. But man looks on the outward appearance. You can have all kinds of good stuff on the inside, but if you look crazy on the outside, it may be that you're not going to get access to some people because presentation is the seed for acceptance. You go to a job interview. You hadn't combed your hair, you got bad breath, your belly button's showing, you, you, you're walking in there and, and, and you expect them to hire you. It's not going to happen. Presentation is the seed for acceptance. The book of Leviticus is full of nothing but presentation of the offerings sent up to God. Presentation matters. What we wear, how we look, presentation matters. Do the best you can. It doesn't cost a lot of money to be clean. Presentation. Where did that come from? I don't know. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't. Presentation is the seed for acceptance. Presentation decides persuasion. Let me give you biblical examples of what I'm talking about. Presentation takes time. Presentation takes creativity. Do you, know, do you know why we do what we do at Forward Conference in two weeks? We'll be at the arena down the road, 10,000, 12,000, 15,000, whatever how many show up. Hope you'll be there. And, and we 
put so much, we, we spend so much on the presentation, the stage, the lights, all that, the games, the, the, so much time is put in it. Why? Why do we do that? Why don't we just throw a regular, you know, just, just get up there and, and, and just, because we're trying, presentation is the seed for acceptance. And when you've got teenagers in, in, in this generation, how you, it's not that we change the message, but the presentation, if it's done with excellence and done in a way that draws kids in, then it becomes the way of acceptance. Presentation is the seed for acceptance. Let me give you an example. Esther soaked in oils and prepared to see the king 12 months before she got an audience with him. She, she prepared 12 months her skin to look awesome and to look great. And the Bible said when she showed up, when she wasn't invited and the king saw her, he held up the scepter and there was a law that said that if she approached him and, and came into his presence, she had already broke that law when he saw her and she would be executed. But when he saw her presentation, when he saw her, he held up the scepter and said, come on in. I want to talk to you. What do you want? Well, what I'm simply saying to you is if she had showed up with her hair undone and, 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 and her uh, in a granny uh, robe and, and flip flops, you know, flip flops, floppity flop, walking all down the aisle. I need to talk to you. It, it wouldn't have worked. <laughs> Presentation is the seed for acceptance. Let me give you another one. Daniel studied the Babylonian language for two and a half years. For three years, actually, he learned palace talk. He learned how to talk to the highest person in the world, the most powerful Pharaoh. And so when he, Daniel, when he goes into the king, when he goes in to the, the person that had such power, he spoke and there was something about his presentation. Had he spoken Hebrew and had to go through an interpreter, it might not. You don't get a lot of chances with a king. You got a minute. You, you better say something that matters. And when he walked in, he understood palace talk. He had his act together and his presentation was so powerful that in one moment, he said, I'm moving you out of the pit and the prison and I'm moving you to the palace and you're going to be over the whole nation, my right hand. You're my guy. And it happened for from one meeting, one meeting, presentation is the seed for acceptance. What about Joseph? Have you ever, we read these things and we don't, we don't draw the comparisons, but presentation is the seed for acceptance. And Joseph understood that. And when Pharaoh called for him to come interpret the dream, the Bible said he changed his garments and he shaved he shaved himself and changed his clothes. Why didn't he just, yeah, I got a word from the Lord. I can interpret it. But he understood, I need my presentation to be right. And he knew that in the culture of the Egyptians, they shaved. Now, Jews to this day, the Orthodox Jews, they don't shave. They don't, sh they don't shave. That's part of their covenant. They, sh they don't shave. And so, but he shaved because he said, I'm going into the king of Egypt and what I'm carrying is from God, but I don't want him to be distracted by anything except I'm, I know my presentation matters if he's going to accept me. And it did. Preaching better than you're letting on right now. Every fisherman hides a hook with the worm. Because presentation is the seed for acceptance. <laughs> it reveals the level of importance. Present yourself at the level God made you. Number eight, I'm almost done. Words are the seeds for feelings. Words. Words paint pictures. Words are like nitroglycerin. They can blow up bridges or they can heal hearts. When somebody's having a heart attack, they take nitro pills. Words can, words can hurt 
Words can wound, or words can heal, and words can restore. And in your mouth is the power of death and life to relationships, to life itself, to attitudes and everything else, because words are the seeds for feelings. You can speak words that can produce bad feelings or words that produce good feelings, and it's up to you. Think before you speak. Right words are the bridge out of trouble if you'll think before you speak. God loved words so much that he named himself the word. Words matter. Number nine, order is the seed for productivity. Order. Order is the seed for productivity. The arrangement of things. Any movement toward order will create joy in your life. Just a crazy little illustration. If you don't, if, if your car is, not, if you have one of those cars that people are riding on it, wash me, wash me. All you got to do to have a good day is go wash that car and you will love everybody. You'll be amazed. You'll ride in that same car. And, and if it's clean and all cleaned up inside and outside, you, it'll be a better day. Preaching, preaching. Amen. Amen. Same is true for your closet, men. <laughs> Problems are seeds for recognition. A problem is an invitation to significance. A problem is your chance to reveal who you are, your talent, your skill, your competence. A problem is not something you run from, but God has called us to be problem solvers. Face it and solve the problem. God will give you his help. When, when Daniel saw the butler and the baker, or when Joseph saw the butler and the baker, I should say, he he instantly saw and recognized the countenance of their face was troubled. And the Bible said that he instantly knew that's my exit. It's a problem. And if I can solve their problem, it'll get me to the king. And if I can solve his problem, it'll get me out of here. But he saw the problem as the exit out of his pain. David ran to Goliath. He didn't run from him. He ran to the problem. He ran to the situation. Shout out loud, everybody. I am a problem solver. I close with this. Confession is the seed for mercy. Millions and millions of angels had pulled their swords and surrounded the city, the ancient city of Nineveh, and they were there by divine commandment to wipe out the whole population because God had tried to reach them and they hadn't refused to repent. But one man, Nineveh, went in, uh, one man, Noah, went and preached. One man, Jonah, went and preached to Nineveh. And when he did, the Bible said that the people began to confess their sins. And confession is the seed for mercy. If you want mercy, all you have to do is start confessing. God, I did it. I'm sorry. I did it. Repentance is the seed for forgiveness. There's a difference between confession. Confession is recognizing it and admitting it. But repentance goes a step further. It says, I did it. I'm sorry I did it. I'm truly sorry that I did it. And by God's grace, I will not go back and do it again. Now that's repentance. I did it. And I moved God that I did it against you. I did it. I did. I, I, I'm better. You, you made me better than this. You made me for more than this. Repentance says I did it. And here's the thing that's missing. Godly sorrow. And I'm sorry I did it. When I used to counsel people that had marriage problems, I faced almost everything you can imagine I would hear. But when it was infidelity. Many, many times I knew instantly whether or not they would be restored. 
because the man or the woman would say, I'm sorry, I did it. But if you didn't feel something deep from within them that said, I'm sorry, I did it. I'm truly broken by this. I'm truly, and I'm not, I'm not talking about just a flood of emotions, but there ought to be something in you that says, oh my God, I have sinned. I'm wretched and, and so lost without you, God, and only you. And Lord, I need you. I repent of my sin. Repentance says, I did it, I'm sorry, and by God's grace, it will not happen anymore. I've never seen a marriage that God couldn't heal if someone came with that spirit. But if they're just saying it to say it because they got caught, it never works. And I guess what I'm saying to you today is, this is the last one. Today is the seed for tomorrow. You're not going to have a different day tomorrow than you are today. Nothing's going to change in your life. If you don't confront, if you don't deal with it, if, if, if you came in this morning and you've got some addiction that's destroying your life, not, nothing's going to change magically tomorrow. Today is the seed for tomorrow. Now is the seed for next. Next. It's not up to God. It's up to you. Today is the seed for tomorrow. And when you begin to understand that and you realize that today is the day of salvation, repentance is the seed for the mercy and the grace and the love of God at the moment you say it all of heaven will come running. When Jonah preached and the, and the people repented, the, the, the mercy of God was released. And it's just standing, being ready right now to be released into your life. And today is the seed for tomorrow. Nothing's going to get better in your life if you don't do something with today. Today. I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit. This weed's destroying my life. I smoke it every day. It's taking everything out of me and taking so much. And you know, it's just going to lead to more. You're going to have to have more. You're going to have to have. Now, now they're now they got to have more THC. And the latest craze is a, it's killing. Even weed is starting to kill kids because they're upping the THC in it more and more and more and more and more and more. And now that's the new epidemic coming. You're starting to see it. And, and, the, and the point that I'm making to you is Today, when's something going to change? Today is the seed for tomorrow. You want a better marriage? It starts today. You want a better life? It starts today. You want forgiveness? You want to, to know that you're walking in the plan and purpose of God? It starts today. He's reaching out to you. He brought you to church this morning at every campus. He brought you where you are. He provided that campus so that you could be sitting there hearing this message today. You don't have any more time to waste. The clock on your destiny is ticking. Well, I feel the presence of the Lord in this room right now. Somebody, this is your altar call this morning. And you know it. You may be watching online, but God knows where you are. All over this room, no one leaving. Please stand to your feet at every campus. Thank you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you would say, Pastor Franklin, I got some things I need to confront. They're destroying me. I need God's grace. I need God's help. I need to repent. I need to confess. I need Jesus to cleanse me. I need a change. And today is the seed for tomorrow. You know I've told you the truth. You know I've told you that the word of God, every one of these principles and laws, they're right out of the word of God. And he's waiting on you. Heaven waits on you. 
so many of you today, this is your moment. And if you're in this room and you would say, Pastor, I need that change in my life. I need to repent because repentance is the seed for forgiveness. All you've got to do is repent and say, I did it. I'm sorry. By God's grace, I'll never do it again. And watch his strength, watch his grace come help you and give you the want to. Watch him surround you with new people and new friends and a new life and a new hope and a new dream. It's available for you today. Today is the seed for tomorrow. Not another day, not someday, not one day. Today. Today. Pastor, pray for me. I'm the one you're preaching to this morning. I need a change in my life. If that's you, confront that change. Confront it right now by lifting your hand high and say, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me. There's hands, there's hands. Raise them high and unashamed. Don't dare allow the enemy to get you to cower down right now. This is the moment between you and God. Every one of you that have your hand raised from the top all the way to the bottom, if God has spoken to your heart, he wouldn't have had you raise your hand if he wasn't. I want you to get out of your seat and I want you to walk down that aisle and stand right down here. I'm going to pray a powerful prayer with you. You can bring your friend if you came with a friend. You can bring your husband or your wife, but you can come. You can come. You can come right now as a seed. Right now as a seed. Right now as a seed. Just just come on. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. Come on. 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 Something's got to change. There needs. I'm confronting you. You don't want the Holy Spirit to leave you alone. The Holy Spirit is confronting you right now. He's pushing back on you right now. He's saying you need it. You need this today. You need this change today. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Anyone else? Anyone else at every campus? The pastors are coming. But right now, just let him speak to you. Just let him lead you. Just let him guide you. It is well. Let's lift our hands and worship the Lord. Thanksgiving is the seed for joy. Thanksgiving is the seed for joy. So why don't you give him some thanks? Things may be crazy in your life in some areas, but God is good all the time and he's in control all the time. So just begin to praise and just begin to worship him. Just begin to love him and honor him. Give him thanksgiving. Sing it again, everybody worship the Lord now. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful, Lord. I praise you. I honor you. Every testimony you heard on the stage this morning can be one of yours. with a seed of faith. It starts with a simple confession and repentance moment. You have no idea the power of that seed. You have no idea what God's planning for your future. Offer Him thanksgiving as a seed for joy. Oh yes, Lord. Thank you. 
one of you who've come forward. The Father is rejoicing. The Father is ecstatic. He knows your name. Isaiah said your name is in the palm print as a as an imprint in his hand. He knows everything about you and he loves you still. And he doesn't want you to play religion. He wants you to just give him the reins to your life. And you're going to do that. It's called repentance. And it's the seed for forgiveness. And it's guaranteed by the one who hung on the cross and shed his blood and died for you. Rose three days later. His name is Jesus. Speak it over your life right now. Jesus in the city. Jesus in the streets. Right now, pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. I confess. I did it. And I'm sorry. I broke your heart. I hurt others. But you still love me. And so today, I repent. By your grace, I'm going to be a better person. I'm going to live for you. I'm going to honor you. I'm going to do what you created me to do. I'm going to praise you. I cast off the law. I cast off the curse. Say it. I throw away trying out of my own flesh. I just receive your grace, your love, your forgiveness. You're not giving me a list of orders of do's and don'ts. You're just giving me grace this morning. I need your love. I need your love. Help me, God. And if you'll ask him, here it comes right now. Receive it in Jesus' name. Forgiveness. Receive it in Jesus' name. Mercy. Receive it in Jesus' name, grace. Now raise your hands and praise Him. And let's just worship Him just another moment. Just another moment.
sing this next verse. Listen to this. This is going to set somebody free. And I just want to sing the name of Jesus. Over fear and all anxiety. Through every soul, help us divide the burden. Depression. I speak Jesus. Thankfulness is the seed for joy. Sing that last verse one more time. I know it's high, but you got it. Declare it one more time. I feel a cloud of depression and anxiety and fear lifted like a fog. in your family, in my family. I speak Jesus. I speak Jesus. I speak Jesus to somebody who feels like you ought to just end it. I speak Jesus. Oh, he loves you. You got good days ahead if you'll turn to him. It's not too late. It's not too late. Hallelujah. Come on, Tony, sing it with him. Clap your hands and praise his name. Praise his name. Praise his name. It's all in Jesus. Peace and healing and hope.
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He sets captives free. Praise the holy name of Jesus. you feeling like that right now? Can we raise our hands one more time in thankfulness and sing his mighty name is Jesus, oh Jesus, precious Jesus. of God's word, you are forgiven, you are washed, you are cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Welcome to the family of God. We love you. You matter. This church loves you, and there's something called next steps you need to check out. Raise your hand and receive the blessing right now. Thank you to the amazing volunteers that minister to our children this week in Summer Extreme. It was absolutely sensational. Over right at a thousand right here at this campus alone, not including the others. And so much of what we talked about presentation to have acceptance. And so many of those kids accepted Jesus. And Pastor Lance and Pastor 
all the teams and our, our wonderful pastors of children in all of our campuses. We love you and we appreciate you and the amazing, amazing volunteers. To God be the glory. As you leave today, remember no matter what the economy does, and I know it cost you to, literally to get here today. This is, there's never been a better time to be a tither and a giver to a ministry that's preaching the gospel. Because God said, I don't care what the economy does. I'm going to take care of my children. So right now, raise your hand as you give. You can give online. They're giving stations all over the building, placed in the halls. You can give that way. However you want to do it, but be led of God and do your best. If you're not a tither, pray about that. Study that in the scriptures because it's the key to blessing and prosperity financially. Your soul saved, that's for free. But there are principles from God's word that if you start working them, they'll start working in your life and you will, be, you will have unexplainable things happen and you'll scratch your head and say, that only happened because I did that. Receive this blessing. One last thing. This is the last one. My book is out there, and I'm going to go back and sign books at the end of this service, and I'd love to sign and take a picture or whatever you want to do. And we love you. Thank you for supporting it. You drove it all the way to the top and all that, so we deeply appreciate it very, very, very much. And if you don't have your copy of Overcoming When You Feel Overwhelmed, you ever been there? It's packed full of things that I believe will help you overcome even when you feel overwhelmed. You can have both going on at the same time, but you are an overcomer. And you need to hear that in this time that we're living in. Here's the blessing for real. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you, be gracious unto you, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We love you all so very much. Have a blessed, blessed week. What a powerful and special worship experience this was. From the worship to the word, all of it, so, so special. The Lord was definitely here with us today. Today, if you made the choice to be saved, we wanna say congratulations. We are so proud of you and happy for you. And we invite you to text the word yes to 510510 so that our team can get connected with you. But also, if you just need prayer for anything at all, text the word prayer to 510510 and our team will get connected with you. Absolutely, Skylar. And I know as a part of the online family, I was once a part of the online family, yes. you can feel sometimes like you're the only one watching. Yeah. You're alone on your side of the screen maybe. But guys, there are ways for you to really feel a part of this family. There are so many ways for you to get connected. We talked about a lot before service, but I wanna remind you of two right now. Yeah. I would love to invite you to join a connect group. This is a place for you to find your individual family yeah. within the greater Free Chapel family. This will help you connect with others and just build that bond that I know I need when yes. I come to church. I need my family there. So go find your Free Chapel online family by joining a Connect group. And guys, we also have our Free Chapel online Facebook group, yes. which is another great place for you to connect with others, maybe share your takeaways from service right, right. and so, so much more. So don't miss out on those two opportunities to get involved. Yes, well, again, thank you all for giving. Pastor touched on it. So. We just want you guys to know how much of an impact you make. And hey, we've gotten us a few shout outs yeah. specifically from our online family yes. giving so generously and letting the Lord use them. So again, go ahead and give. You don't even understand how much of an impact you are making in this church and throughout the world, honestly. But anyway, before we continue on, let me pray for you as we go on with our Sunday. But Lord, thank you so much for our online family. I pray they know how special they are, how chosen they are, and how grateful we are as a church to have every single one of them joining us, Lord. I pray you bless them. I pray they remember this message throughout the week that a certain seed would just pop out to them, Lord, and that they would focus on that seed, whether it be today's seed for tomorrow or whatever the case may be, God, let them remember a seed and let them take it with them throughout the week, God. And I pray they'd be encouraged. I pray they'd be blessed. We pray all this in your holy son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We love you guys. We will see you next week. See ya.